Hello comrades, come here Sir Bro here today with Pike and Shot Campaigns. That's right. Slytherin was so, so very kind to provide me with a copy of the game, and I must say I am absolutely impressed. Ugh, ugh. I'm starting to sound more and more like a Slytherin fanboy. I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry. I swear it's not favoritism. Just the past couple of games I played for them have been really damn good. And honestly, I'm starting to consider them pretty much my go-to for war games. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But with that fanboyism out of the way, let's actually take a look at what this game is. Now this is pretty much a standalone expansion to uh, Pike and Shot, which came out not too long ago. It kind of added in a campaigns mode rather than it just being historical battles and skirmishes that you could fight. So it's really added to the replay value of the game. So I could sit here and talk your ears off all day, but I'm just going to get right to the fight. Now, with the campaigns, you have a couple of different choices. As you can see here, you've got the basic Pike and Shot, you've got Gustavus Adolphus, English Civil War, and the Great Turkish War. And now, if that's not enough, you can actually go up here and you can download additional community scenarios. That's right. These are mods, essentially. People fiddle around with them a little bit here and there. There's even a Sengoku Jidai mod, which is very, very damn good. So yeah, you've got, you've got all that and it's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. Needless to say, I'm already in the middle of my own campaign, so I figure I'll show you that. You do have five different difficulty levels. You can adjust the game speed, scroll speed, so on and so forth. Advanced options. See, there's quite a few little things here there that you can do. Yes, simple enough. So I'm going to pick this, and we're going to load in. All right, so this is the situation as follows. I'm playing as the Catholic forces of Germany. That's right. And I'm fighting against the peripheritous Swedes. <laughs> they're coming in and they're taking their gerbs. So we're gonna come in and take our gerbs back. Herb. Essentially, the way the campaign maps is, map is, it's very simple. Each region you have gains a certain amount of money. Uh, it has a certain amount of supply points, so a certain sized army can only exist in a certain sized place. Essentially right here, the Catholic First Army is an army of 11, 27 points. I can have a grand total of 13, 16. So yeah, yeah, basically I could have 200, roughly 200 more points in this army before it would start to take attrition damage. Each region also has manpower. Manpower shows you how much men you can raise in that region. And uh, yeah, you, like I said, you get money every spring uh, from taxation from all the regions you own. So having more regions is better than having no regions, of course. Now the Swedes, even though I've won a, quite a few decisive battles against them, uh, managed to do just enough damage to keep me uh, from invading and retaking these various parts of Germany. So what I'm going to do with Catholic First is I'm going to go ahead and attack the Swedish Second and we're going to see what the battles look like, because that's the real bread and butter of these games. Alright. Oh, well, they retreated. Whatever. Cowards! You cowardly Swedish dogs! Alright, so let's end our turn, since there's really nothing else to do. Why Why did both my armies just retreat? No one even attacked me. It's just subdued and retreated to Bohemia. Why? Okay, whatever. Well, it tells you right there why things happened. Franconia. Really? We didn't have enough... Oh, okay, well, I lost men. That's no bueno. No bueno at all. Oh, they have the supply limit. It's only 837, 832 there, so I can see why that happened. All right, makes sense. Simple enough. We're going to send... We're going to send these guys up here. Can I not attack this turn? Nope, guess not. Okay, guess might as well end my turn. Can't do anything anyway. All right, so I'm going to send this army here. And the Swedish 5th retreated. Of course they would. And we're going to send this army here. Oh yeah, we should probably refit my army. Refitting is essentially your armies come out of date or something. New technologies come out and then you can refit them. Get them back up to where they need to be. Alright, well apparently I can only attack Saxony this turn. Alright, well there we go. Local Swedish forces are coming to attack us. The Swedish first is going against the Catholic first. So let's make some shit happen, right? Alright. 
So, this is the screen. This essentially shows you what the order of battle is, at least for your army, how many guys you have, what their skills are, their stats are. If you look over there to the right, um, you've got three separate stats. You have a close combat rating, you have a shooting rating, and you have an armor rating. The blue would be the armor. Um, it also tells you what the, sh the troop is made up of, what the quality of it is, which essentially is its, you know, its experience and so on, and all sorts of other good stuff. So there's various different things that can make these guys better and make them different. For example, this particular group of Pike and Shot actually has light guns. So it makes them significantly better. They have a longer range and they do a hell of a lot more damage. Alright. So this is the deployment phase. Essentially, as it says, you get to deploy your units. Yeah, simple shit, right? Simple shit. Quite literally. Um, Alright. Let's, I'm going to just basically move my veteran horses. I like to essentially keep the cavalry on one flank. I don't really protect the wings uh, with cavalry as most generals would. Just personal preference. Personal preference. Uh, let's see. And I like to, rather than having the lanes like that, I like to just go ahead and have them all like this. Because it means I can have a more concentrated... Everyone has the same range. As far as I'm concerned, I'm covering more lanes. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's why I do that. <laughs> Actually, you know what? We will keep uh, three groups of horse on the left flank. Uh, and, you know, basically, this will be more of our defensive horses. These are going to be our offensive horses. So, yeah, sounds good, sounds good. By the way, these battles are relatively long so I'm not going to show you an entire battle what I will do though is I will kind of I'll stop recording here uh, to let the AI kind of move towards us so yeah that's what I will do that is what I will do all right so we've now moved close enough where the enemy Swedish army is moving up that's right little by little keep in mind these are actually a little bit larger army sizes too these aren't tiny armies by any means of the imagination so there's gonna be a little bit of a, a delay as far as it goes like waiting for each unit to move but don't worry once they finally do their bit I'll explain how each of the phases work so everybody understands damn they've already disrupted my light artillery guns holy shit these douchebags love, love douchebags yeah, well this that yeah that artillery is gonna we're gonna lose that. So I guess we'll shoot the most advanced unit they have, so it would be these guys. Alright, we'll take four of them, whatever. Yep, alright. So essentially, as I said before, movement works pretty simply. You actually left click and you right click on the box to move them up. Simple stuff. Now they have a certain firing arc, which generally can be seen as that essentially they can pretty much hit anything within like I think it's 45 degrees in front of them is it 45 degrees no it's way more than that <laughs> yeah okay well it's pretty big it's pretty big like I said look at that they have pretty much can shoot at this box this box and this box so yeah so we're gonna fire on this uh, finish Hakapelita. Uh, there we go alright we're gonna move our veteran pike and shot up it has shot on both those we're gonna fire on them try to disrupt their formation to bring down their attack power and we're just gonna keep our veteran horses on the front there get our commanded shot to provide some skirmishing fire and move our arc abuses kind of at an angle there keep them behind the formation though so they don't get messed up and we're gonna move this third pike and shot right there we do have a hill advantage for the majority of our army as you can see right here and I'm gonna try to keep that now we also have our cavalry like I said off to the right as far as numbers go we have the right completely dominated with cavalry so uh, I'm gonna try to do kind of a maneuver around them try to get around these dragoons and uh, this this uh, commanded shot here and we'll see how that goes. I make no guarantees that it's actually going to work, but eh, who knows, who knows. And we're just going to basically move up. A lot of our horse doesn't even have guns, so they're pretty much charging in without without weapons. 
we do have these dragoons here who can provide some covering fire. There you go. Do some damage. Be able to close the distance on the next turn. They can already pretty much close the distance now. But uh, I want to be closer. I want to see what their enemy, the enemy cap does. Because that's really what's going to make a difference in our war effort here. Is what the enemy cap decides to do. Alright, so that's the end of our, our main movement and combat phase. So, when you end this phase, you have the residual shooting phase. Where essentially units that can shoot, will shoot. Jesus, our light guns are getting fucked up. That's ridiculous. And then you've got a melee combat phase where any units that are engaged in melee combat will uh, continue their combat. And so you can see here, now that the enemy's moving within range of my guys, since none of them fired, I am pretty much have Overwatch all the way down the line. As long as they keep getting close. Also, a lot of units, if they didn't fire, if you fire at them, they will fire back at you. So... It's pretty simple, basic turn-based turn -based war game mechanics and whatnot. My oh, god, they still have more units. Oh, look, they've got more horses in the back. That's no bueno. No bueno. Ooh, yeah, that's right. We already disrupted that group of dragoons. Now, to win this battle, essentially what we need to do is we need to rout about 60% of the enemy troops. That's how I've played and won every battle I've played so far. I've actually only lost one battle, and it was through that Sengoku Jedi mod. So, but and it, that was that was really really hard. Like the enemy army is like thirty, like thirty to forty percent larger than yours. So, it's a pretty touch and go type of battle. All right, so it is now our turn again. Thank God, we're gonna turn a third pike and shot. They're within range of this third of the sixth Swedish salvo foot, and we're gonna open fire on them. Try to disrupt that formation as fast as we can. Uh, let's also go ahead and open fire with our dragoons. Nice, we broke the enemy dragoons and have disrupted their commanded shot. So what I'm thinking, move these guys up, put a little bullet at them. There you go. Uh, maybe going with the seventh horse. Yeah, the seventh horse will win that fight. Okay, but it caused them to evade. No worries. No worries. We're going to bring them up right to the rear. Bring them up. Bring them up. Alright, looking good, gentlemen. Looking very damn good. And we're just going to move him right there. Don't move him too close. I might break that first veteran horse off to uh, provide support on the left there. Or right here on the, on, the, on the right flank of our infantry army. That's very, very possible. I do know that I'm about to pop a bullet in these Swedish Shalvo foot asses with this guy. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I'm trying to do as much damage as possible. Again, if you look at their attack rating and their armor rating, they could pretty much take any singular group of our guys on one-on-one -on -one and win. So we want to try to do as much damage as humanly possible. And also, we need to take out those light guns. Same same reason they have it. Look at that shooting rating because they have the light gun. So we're gonna try to disrupt that formation as quickly as humanly possible. Damn, they've got some serious infantry on this flank. I do not like that on the center. They've got seriously heavy infantry in the center. Like my guy, if they get into close combat, my guys don't stand a fucking chance. At range, it's pretty even. I might even have a slight advantage because I have more men. Yeah, we're actually going to try to do some damage to those horses. Uh, that's not good. We could try charging. No, it's going to make us charge the dudes in the center. Oh, no bueno. We're outnumbered. Three horses to two. And of that, both are three horses. The, it's their three horses versus mine, but my three horses are not meant for this kind of combat, so they will lose. They will fight, and they will die. Huh. Yep. Yep, those odds are really bad. It shows you the odds off to the right there as well, if you were curious, where it says impact. There's a 12% chance we'd win, and 80% chance it'd be a draw. Fuck it. Oh, God. Yeah, we totally lost that. 
I'm imagining we're going to lose most of these, but if we can bog them down in fighting, oh, okay, we actually didn't lose that one, uh, we can ensure that they don't hit that commanded shot, which would pretty much get wiped out. All right, so there's another turn for us, for the most part. Yeah, yeah, it is. We're going to turn the six horse, and we're going to turn these guys as well. So now they're kind of faced that way. So you can see that my whole army's going that way. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and end this turn. And uh, it'll go into the residual shooting phase. Anything that didn't shoot will shoot, so basically. A bunch of their guys are going to shoot back at us and do a fuck ton of damage. All right. Melee phase. Nothing's in melee except for on the western flank. Uh, yep. Yeah, and my my horses are already succumbing on the on the east, the western flank. That's not good. That's not good at all. Now it's my guys' turn to fire back. They're moving and getting closer. God, they are getting right next to us. Yeah, see, they're going. They're closing the distance between us. Because they know they have an advantage of melee, so if we can't disrupt them, and damn if they're not doing casualties and they actually have more foot than us. Pretty much what it's looking like to me is we're going to have to rely on the cavalry flank on our right to save the day. Because the, that infantry center is just too damn strong. So we're going to have to rely on our cavalry to really step up this battle and hopefully win it for us. Hopefully. Yeah, all right, just a little bit of shooty going on, just a bit. Damn. As long as that cavalry holds just a little bit longer, just keep on, buddies. Just hold for a little bit. Let's at least get engaged in some combat on the main front here. All right, so boom, 25. Damn. Oh, this is this is infuriating. I don't know. The Swedes might have this one, guys. And I don't even know what to do about this mess. Support! Support! It's fucking... <laughs> fucking second horse. We're gonna... About face? Open fire! Alright. Alright. Uh, yeah. This is not looking good, guys. We've already started to take major... Like, all along the line, a lot of our dudes are already kind of buckling under the pressure. Alright. God damn it, I didn't mean to do that. I always make that mistake. Or accidentally right click on it when I mean to turn them. Whatever. So we're going to move the reserve pike and shot, I think. Or no, this group is probably going to get pushed back. So what we'll do is we'll keep these guys here and we'll move up through that area there. We're going to open fire at point blank. These guys. Good job, boys. Good job. We still got... Damn, they just have so much infantry. I need them to break somewhere. And I'm just not sure where. Like, if we can just concentrate fire... Yeah, we're just gonna have to try to concentrate fire on select groups. That group. I need that group dead. Open fire. Alright. Alright, so Cav now has a shot at hitting their infantry. Unfortunately, they have about they have turned, so. Yeah, send our Kirasias in. Alright, so they've got him engaged in combat. Okay, our Kibuzas. Open fire. Good shots. Kirasias coming into the rear. Ooh, did some major damage on that one. Good shit, boys. Good shit. And we're just going to kind of bring up everybody else to do some damage. Actually, no, that's their primary. Okay, that's the primary target. 8%, 75. Oh, what the fuck? Come on. I can't have that shit. We got to win. We got to win. Fight to win, men. Fight to win. 
who's his primary target? Nobody? <laughs> yeah, nobody. Whatever. Alright, we'll bring the Hussars off the right flank. We'll bring the Dragoons around this way. Open fire on that Swedish salvo foot. Come around the western. We gotta try to break their cap. Come the fuck on, man. We had a 21% chance to win. See, this game is infuriating, but it's really damn fun. And this is the whole idea of the game, really. Is uh, you sit here and you fight these massive battles with units all up and down the board. It's very simple, but damn if it isn't hard at the same time. But it's fun. It's really fun, and I really like the game. And like I said, it's it's frustrating as hell because like when you think you're gonna win, the odds look like they're in your favor, and bam, you lose. You lose a major melee that could have been decisive for the entire uh, the entire front. So. This game's great. I highly suggest this game, and there's a lot of replayability, especially with the editor. There's also play-by-email, multiplayer. Um, personally, I would prefer if they did it the good old-fashioned way, you know, with actual, like, damn! Damn these Swedish, like, soldiers fucking us up! These casualty figures are insane! 43 to 10? Literally, a 10? Oh! Four to ten losses, and like we're not even getting close to disrupting their formations. This is insane. This is absolutely insane. Anyway, this has been Kamisabro playing Pike and Shot campaigns from the Lords Collective and Slytherin, and I highly, highly suggest this game. It's a hell of a lot of fun, and I think you'll like it as well. So, Lords and Ladies, I hope to see you on the battlefield. And I will also see you next time when I'm not getting my ass kicked by the Swedes. <laughs>